Hi, everyone, and welcome to the lineup. Today is March the 21st, 2024. I'm Barry Stagner and really looking forward to our program this evening. I know you'll be blessed and encouraged as we have a very, very dear friend and special guest with us this evening, uh, Amir Sarfati, a founder and president of Behold Israel Ministries, and um, really uh, look forward to the insights that he's going to bring us uh, regarding what's going on with the nation of Israel. And uh, Amir, welcome to the lineup. Shalom, Barry. Thank you very much. I'm excited Shalom. to be here. Good to see you. And a uh, couple of things I wanted to just maybe chat about for a moment before we jump in. Uh, one of them is, you know, I know we all appreciate the updates on Connect and what's going on there, but maybe you could share the overall vision uh, with this on the ground facility uh, there in Israel and what the Lord has laid on your heart to do. Yeah. So I think the first time I ever talked about Connect was uh, at your church when we first gathered in your new building. And yes. we had to sit down, talk, and you you asked me. And, and, and during that time, I mentioned that I sensed that something big is going to happen. And I think that there is a need for me to be in Israel in 2024 and 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 have my base here. And and this is exactly what I've been doing. Uh, I am in the country. We're building our center here. We named it Connect because it's aimed to connect the people of Israel with the Bible, the people around the world with Israel, the news with the Bible. Um, and, and, you know, it's all about uh, basically making sense of the crazy thing that is going on here all around the world and especially in this part of the world and i'm extremely excited because connect is going to not only connect uh me with the country and and also uh you know bring a better quality uh broadcasts uh, um it'll also for the first time uh since we began this ministry it'll allow me to have a physical location to teach in person groups from around the world as well as israeli believers um and so we're very much excited about that within a few weeks it will be done and ready and we hope to launch the place in mid-may of uh, 2024. wonderful can't wait can't wait to see it so yes uh, excited for you and what God has laid on your heart. And, you know, as you mentioned a minute ago, I thought it was interesting because we talked about this several times as we were traveling together in 2023 uh, about what the Lord had laid on your heart. And I think it's just not just about connect, but about being in Israel during that year as uh, you had used, you know, terms like ominous and things like that, uh, you know, concerning what was coming in Israel. And then lo and behold, October 7th, uh, everything changed. Uh, for your country and for the Jewish people uh, around the world, really, and uh, it's pretty pretty amazing that that God yeah. cares enough about us to to give us insight uh, well in advance to do uh, what He told you to do and uh, exactly. just stay home. Yeah, and uh, you know it's a new era for me, also for the family, um, even for the church that I'm part of here. Uh, no one is used to see me that all that. Uh, that long uh and uh and the good thing though is that um i do believe the urgency of of teaching uh, uh on mostly bible prophecy because there's so much despair and and so much confusion uh, especially after october 7th i mean people are hurting you know how could that happen and um so you know the only hope that this nation has is the Messiah. The only hope is for peace is when the Prince of Peace will come. Until then, we're going to see uh, even worse things than what happened on October 7th. So it's important that we are uh, going to have a place that you know we can actually communicate that to the locals as well as to the world. And you know, Barry, it's not only about Israel. It's 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 you know the body of Christ is is under heavy attack of sensationalism and confusion and deception. And, and uh, you know, it's part of what I believe I'm called to do. And, you know, I'm not loved and appreciated for that because, you know, it's not an easy thing to, you know, uh, sometimes burst the bubble and 
but at the same time, you know, we need to stick with the important things and and let the fluff go away. Yeah, it um, the discouragement and despair and the things that you mentioned. I watched a, a video clip earlier, and I wanted to ask you about this also, uh, where there was a, a lady from one of the many uh, Instagram uh, Israeli pages, you know, that are supportive of the nation and the Jewish people around the world. And, and she was talking uh, in a word of encouragement uh, to Jewish listeners, especially those in Israel. And I wanted to ask you exactly, you know, knowing, and we talked a little bit about this last time that you were on, how, how discouraging it is to see the world turn against an entire nation that you uh, were born into and, you know, that um, God has a, a very clear plan for in the last days. How important is it uh, for the Jewish people, uh, believers in Christ or Yeshua and otherwise, to have the support of individual Christians and people around the world? I mean, is, is that something that that matters to uh, oh, the people of the nation? Oh, oh yeah, it, it matters so much. Look, Barry, we are under an enormous attack of of deception in levels that uh, you know I'm I'm kind of familiar with, but most of the Israelis are not. And you have to understand that Israel has been engaged in an effort as a nation to be like the rest of the world, to be accepted by the rest of the world, to be a nation among the the nations of the world. Uh, the liberals were always uh, trying to hide their Jewish identity in order not to be different and and, and they, they were pushing progressive liberal agenda uh, just because we're you know part of the, the whole world and October 7 comes horrific things happen uh, it, 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 these events happen in the physical location where the most progressive liberal Jews live it happens in a music festival that is projecting peace and love and all of that and in the midst of all of that carnage and torture and death and uh, that we have never seen in levels we've never seen before uh all took place within a matter of a uh, few hours and you would think, you would think that uh, the world will, you know, understand and agree that something has to be done. Well, the Jewish people were absolutely convinced that what happened cannot happen again, and the world definitely understands because it was filmed, it was documented. And now the world will definitely understand that we have to go and eradicate that that evil. Well, no, no. In, in fact, what they see now is denial of what happened, justification of what happened, and if anything, the hope that something like that will even happen again in the future. And that shocked the Jewish people. Now you have to understand it's it came with as no surprise to me or to any conservative that that understand exactly who we're dealing with but you can imagine the shock of the peaceniks those who were uh, fighting for the rights of Palestinians for the hopes of Palestinians those who were advocating for Palestinian statehood those who were always there for those poor people those who thought that there are so many of them that are only there to ha live in peace with us and they are shocked to find out that on the other side, they want to destroy us. And they are shocked to find out that the world is allowing those type of genocidal plans to be communicated all over the world without any interference. Well, it's interesting, as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, what the diaspora couldn't do. Uh, a lot of people in the progressive left are trying to do today, and that's just get the Jews to assimilate, basically disappear. Uh, Satan, you know, he's tried to conquer them and destroy uh, your people. And uh, now uh, there's another tactic. Every other culture that has been scattered amongst other societies simply assimilated into those cultures, but not the Jewish people uh, because they stuck together uh, in all the nations they were scattered to. 
Uh, but Satan uh, obviously understands the role of Israel in Bible prophecy in the last days, and his hope in destroying the plan of God is to destroy the people of God. And just watching all this unfold, uh, you know, it, it, I think for any Bible-believing Christian who understands Israel's role uh, creates just a, a huge empathy uh, in our hearts. I know it does mine for, for you mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the people of Israel. And I wanted to talk to you about a couple of stories and have you uh, comment on them regarding some of the things going on uh, on your borders, really, uh, but specifically uh, on the northern border. And uh, I saw an article from the Jewish News Syndicate that asked the question, is a war against Hezbollah imminent? And this Iranian proxy on your northern border uh, continues to be active in uh, firing missiles and rockets in your direction and uh, seems to be uh, just maybe waiting for something to push the ultimate button uh, for an all-out attack. But uh, is does it seem as though uh, a northern front uh, is going to increase beyond even what it is right now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, 82,000 Israelis will tell you that they're not going back home unless we finally deal with Hezbollah. And to deal with Hezbollah is not to sign another meaningless agreement uh, an agreement that we, we signed in, in 2006 after the Second Lebanon War, and which meant nothing to them because they're back on our border. And so we, we, we totally understand that uh, another political, uh, you know, wash away uh, agreement is not going to do it. Uh, we need to take from Hezbollah its capabilities. And in order to do that, we must eliminate their capabilities or at least hurt them very badly. And uh, we've been doing that. Look, at least the area next to our border, we've been cleaning it up from the air. Obviously, we're, we haven't begun a ground maneuver, but a ground maneuver is the next thing. And we have three major uh, infantry divisions and, and armored divisions along the border right now. Uh, we have been exercising over the last uh, few weeks on the border, uh, and we have uh, plans ready and we, I'm not going to tell you when, but we already have a date. I mean, uh, uh, mm. for uh, the um, northern operation to begin, we are waiting for a couple of reasons at the moment. First of all, we want to finish the job in Gaza. It, we could have finished it if it wasn't for the U.S. administration um, not insisting on us not going into Rafa, but but we are going into Rafa. We we made it very clear. Uh, we already uh, have uh, the prime minister approving the operational plan for the military operation. Now we have uh, the plans to uh, evacuate the population that needs to be approved and and then implemented. Uh, we've got um, close to a million Palestinians in the Rafah area that we are going to move to uh, areas northwest of where they are right now. We want to clear the city and go in and destroy the last four battalions of Hamas that are entrenched right in that city. We also want to discontinue the free flow of ammunition and weapons and goods from the Egyptian side under the ground, um, alongside along the the what we call Philadelphia corridor, and in order to do that, you have to have a ground maneuver. Um, people don't understand that whatever is above the ground in Gaza is about forty percent of our problem. Sixty percent of our problem in Gaza is not above the ground; it's under the ground, mm -hmm. and so. Um, we need in order to get there, you can't do it from the air. You have to go and you have to send your troops into those tunnels and then um, make sure that we destroy them after we map them and make sure that we find whatever we need uh, over there. Uh, and so, again, don't forget, Barry, we have a, still 135. Uh, hostages that um, are there, of which I believe at least 50 are still alive. So we want to bring the dead bodies to be buried, and we want to bring the living hostages back home. And uh, in order to do that, you cannot just drop bombs everywhere in Rafa. We believe we know where they are, by the way. 
We believe we know where the leadership is of Hamas as well. And this is why we're very careful in how we do things and, and what we do. And so this is unlike any other war we ever fought. By the way, it's already the second longest war in Israel's history. It's only second to the War of Independence. But we're already longer than any other war we fought since. And um, I will also tell you that we are looking into two years of cleaning up in Gaza. Uh, neglection of 20 years cannot be, uh, cannot be solved and dealt with in, in just a few months. Uh, and uh, one of the proofs to that is that we were in the Shifa hospital a few months ago, and now we had to go back. Um, because they're still around, they're under the ground, they are uh, assimilating in the civilian population, and it takes time to clean up. And um, they they were completely shocked that we got back to the hospital, and this time without any resistance. I mean, within 20 minutes, we were there, surrounded the place, and they were trapped. And uh, we called them out, and 90 terrorists were killed, and 350 were taken. Uh, arrested. In fact, the hospital, not only that it was a place for terrorists, but right now the Israeli army has a whole corridor in the Shifa hospital where we are interrogating those that, whom we captured on the spot. Um, and they give us valuable. This is a gold mine because these are the terrorists that already survived 165 days. So then we don't care about what you know from the first week of the war. It doesn't it's not valid anymore, but we care about what you what you know about the leaders of Hamas and how they managed to escape now. So a gold mine is there, and so so we we have a lot to do. We are doing it, and we will continue to do that. The northern front will be dealt with, and so other fronts as well. Well, we hear a lot of uh, comments from the negative side, you know, regarding a humanitarian crisis and all that. And, you know, the I think one of the things that the world just turns a blind eye to is all the efforts that the IDF makes to give advance notice to vacate areas where uh, there's going to be either an air or ground assault. And yet this seems to be just overlooked by, uh, obviously, the as you call them, the Medianites. And, um, you know, there's just an indifference to all these efforts that are unprecedented in, in uh, the history of, of of war, uh, people Look. just don't do uh, what the Israelis have done. And so, you know, I mean, surprise is one of the key elements of any battle, and uh, gaining the upper hand over your adversary. And yet, you guys uh, have been uh, careful and cautious, and and yeah. alerting the civilian population. And yet, the world—that's all they want to talk about—is a humanitarian yeah. crisis. And yet, like you're talking about with this hospital, uh, I've seen some of the pictures you posted and watched other videos about uh, caches of weapons that are found mm -hmm. inside of homes and, uh, you know, the things going on at the hospital as well as other places where they're basically terrorist headquarters or strongholds or even uh, like a, a, an armament depot. Uh, where, is the, of somebody's yeah. where is the United Nations? Where is the World Health Organization? Where is the International Red Cross? We just proved to the whole world then, but even more so now, this is a headquarters for terrorists. It's not a hospital. They were shooting at us from patients' rooms in a hospital. Hmm. And so, look, we are engaged in a three-dimensional war. It's a war above the ground. It's a war under the ground. And it's a war in the airwaves and in the media. And um, it's nice if you make advancement on, on above the ground or under the ground, but if you're losing the media one and the international pressure is mounting and then you don't get munitions and you don't get help, um, nobody wants to sell you. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a secret, Barry, but many of our good friends are, are not selling us TNT right now because uh, Russia is threatening them not to sell. Hmm. Um, we are uh, dealing with a situation where we need to be very careful on, on how much we use our munition. And um, it's not a look, we have uh, quite a few challenges here. 
And uh, again, the media is out there to blow up things out of proportion in order to apply pressure. So it will be translated in, in real help on the ground that we will uh, not get anymore. Um, but guess what? Guess what? They're going to lose and we're going to win. <laughs> because we know the end of the book, don't we? Yeah, that's right. There you go. Yeah, you had something interesting happen down by a lot uh, that was, uh, according to Times of Israel and other papers, uh, a first. Maybe you can talk about what happened uh, down there. Well, you know, we we are subjected not only to attacks from Lebanon, but also from the Houthis in Yemen, as well as from pro-Iranian militias or what they call the resistance in Iraq and Syria. And they're using missiles and they're using drones. And so one of those missiles from, we believe, from uh, Yemen, because it came from the Red Sea, uh, landed north of Eilat in an open space uh, in an area um, where we have cameras that are monitoring uh, animals and the movement of animals in that region. So that's how we captured that footage that I mm. posted on Telegram. Um, it didn't hurt anyone. It, it, that's why there was no alert that was activated because uh, we could uh, we could uh, calculate that it's not going to fall on on populated area. But um, you know, this is what we deal with. We have literally rockets and drones flying from the south, from the southeast, from the southwest, from the northeast, and from the north. And uh, the only the only area rockets are not flying towards Israel from is the Mediterranean Sea. Um, um, but from every other direction, rockets and drones are flying, and we are... Uh, so they're testing our systems, and we are testing our systems as well. <laughs> and um, we are uh, finding solutions. It's it's a it, it's a fact that hundreds of missiles and drones uh, flew at Israel from all directions, and yet nothing from Syria, Iraq, or um, Yemen hit or hurt anyone. Uh, so I mean, it, it says a lot. Um, we are definitely watching an effort of the Iranian proxies to attract the attention and efforts uh, in order to let Iran buy time to do what Iran wants to do when it comes to the nuclear uh, program over there. And that's, that's what they wanted. They wanted uh, Hezbollah to not only keep us busy before, but in case Israel is going to attack in Iran, Hezbollah is the one to punish us from the north. So let's put it this way. Um, it's not really working for them, you know? And as I said before, the Iranians were very surprised on October 7th, very surprised. And they also uh, were, were pretty angry with uh, Hamas because, um, Hamas did not coordinate with the Iranians the day. The plan was that uh, on a given moment, uh, everyone will attack at the same time. And uh, the simultaneous attack would have probably brought Israel down on its knees. And uh, I'm, I'm not even sure if I, I would be here to talk to you right now. But Hamas, you know, doing what it did uh, basically caused the Iranians to say, okay, we're going to support your efforts, but we're not going to fight for you. And uh, and that's what we see. You know, Hezbollah is just paying lip service and sending stuff, but they're making sure they there's a line they don't cross. And um, Hezbollah has quarter million rockets of which... 10% are precision guided. They could, you know, Hezbollah can change the skyline of Tel Aviv if they want. And yet they understand that Lebanon will be destroyed and Hezbollah will be gone after that. So I think Iran is calculating its steps and they don't want to 
sacrifice another important asset in the Middle East. So Hamas, they already understand they're going to lose it. They don't want to lose Hezbollah. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to ask you about that because we hear not a lot of numbers floating around about you know what what the hardware looks like on the on your northern border on the uh, Lebanese side and you know uh, Hezbollah is not Hamas as you well know as far as their capabilities and you know these aren't you know f- uh, factory made uh, garage made missiles that are coming out of uh, out of Lebanon I mean as you mentioned there's a good percentage of them. Uh, that actually have smart technology. They're not just a dumb bomb or a dumb rocket that just kind of you fire it in the general direction and it lands where it does. Uh, mm-hmm. These have, you know, GPS guidance and all these other things. Uh, so they're they're very accurate. And so that's a that's a major game changer. And that's that's why I wanted to lead with that question for you. You know, is there, you know, a, a Hezbollah uh, Israel uh, engagement on a on a different level? coming in the future and uh, because that's that's a whole different animal than yeah. even the what's happening on the southern border and you know amir as you talked about i i always find it interesting and i mentioned this on the lineup regularly how bizarre it is for israel to be told what to do uh by the u.s or other nations you know you're you're a sovereign nation the only democracy in the middle east you know the uh arab israelis uh, have wonderful opportunities to both practice their uh, belief system, to hold jobs, own businesses, be members of Knesset, and and yet you know none of that is recognized. It's all you know just negative, negative, negative. The UN, the United Nothing, you know passes some I think it was 14 resolutions last year against Israel, and yet none against the aggressors. Uh, against your nation, and it's just um, again, I think that points to the the spiritual element of this uh, that yeah. we're seeing happen in the last days. Exactly, and I, I can tell you the the sense among the Israelis is that it's time to disengage from America. Uh, mm-hmm. The sense among the Israelis it's, is, is it's time to manufacture our own weapons. It's time to not uh, lean on on a country that thinks that we are its fifty first star uh, and state. Um, we can clearly see that we we do not see in the same way uh, things, and we cannot allow that to uh, to basically set uh, how we behave in a, in a war that is an existential threat. You know, and um, you know, oftentimes, Barry, we talk about the fact that America must decline uh, from uh, empire status or superpower status for the Ezekiel war to take place. But I see it on both sides. I see not only that America is declining, but also Israel is interested in disengaging. And, and it's it's what we see now is very, we are alarmed that America will unfreeze $10 billion to Iran and yet uh, pr- pr- uh, I guess prohibit Israel from finishing its job when right. people who wants to destroy it. So we're, we're, you know, calculating our moves. Now, of course, I am hoping that by November there will be a new president and a new administration that, but let's face it, until November, a lot can happen. I mean, we're only in March right now. Yeah, and right. and if so much can happen um, and so we, we understand that we cannot be hostages in the hands of lunatic, progressive, liberal administration that is completely giving up to the woke part of its party. It's just not, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, I also think that um, the Democratic Party must remember that many Jewish people are in America are now reconsidering their vote. Uh, for the Democrats. They, they can see what's going on. So they may gain the Muslims, but they are losing the Jewish vote. Uh, so I'm not sure if it's a smart move on Biden's behalf. Um, look, uh, not only America, but also Europe, we're watching it. We're watching the, the Islamic um, takeover. And I, I t- strongly believe Barry, that the, the, the rise of the Antichrist 
in Western Europe will be related to their uh, complete wish to uh, have a Western European leader uh, leading the world and uh, get rid of this uh, Islamic takeover, um, especially after the Ezekiel war that will bring about an end to radical Islam yeah. to begin with. So it's very, very interesting where we live in historical times, Barry. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't want to live in any other time uh, period, uh, but we must be very strong and very with perseverance and endurance and patience. These are things that more than ever before believers must be equipped with. You know, it's interesting that, you know, the highest ranking Jewish official, official in the elected official in the history of America, uh, Chuck Schumer, is calling for, you know, Netanyahu's removal. And again, this uh, uh, yeah. strong arming and influence and threats of withholding uh, financial support and all these things. You know, it, it takes my mind to uh, Zechariah chapter 12. And, you know, if we, we don't want to be heaving uh, Jerusalem away or throwing it to the dog, so to speak, as the Lord has been very clear as to how he's going to deal with such nations. And, you know, I know 12 to 14 of Zechariah deals with the tribulation period, but, you know, we're watching things develop right now that are going to be ultimately fulfilled uh, during the tribulation. And you just look at, uh, I, I love the fact that, you know, the book of Revelation talks about uh, the things written there will shortly take place. That means they'll, they'll Once happen in starts. quick succession. Correct. And, uh, you know, here we are. I mean, October 6th, the world looked one way. October 7th, it was completely different. And, you know, we're just watching this escalation of movement uh, toward the uh, the time of ultimate fulfillment when the 70th week of Daniel comes back into play. And it's just bizarre to see, you know, an American Jew uh, kind of taking an anti-Israel posture and, yeah. you know, this government's got to go. And, and yet, you know, this is all part and parcel of what yeah, the space is going to look like. I, I think that there is a coordinated effort between the radical left in Israel and the progressive movements in America to topple an elected government in Israel. Uh, they've been trying to topple Netanyahu for the longest time. Mm. Somebody, somebody in Israel thinks that it's a great idea to use the war as an excuse to remove him. And they went and whispered that in the ears of the U.S. president and his party. And what's, you know, in, in, we see a collaboration of the radical left in Israel with the radical left in America. And it, it comes in, in two different ways. One, it comes in the way of politicians like Schumer, but it also comes in way of Thomas Friedman from the New York Times and others that are writing articles after articles after articles against Netanyahu. They, they literally blame him for everything. There's such a built-in hatred for the man. And these people lost their way. They lost their way. I mean, October 7th, if there is one person that you cannot blame October 7th on, it's Net is Netanyahu. Everyone else, all those radical, liberal, left-wing people that are now shouting to remove Netanyahu, they are the people behind it because they're the people who told everyone that Hamas is deterred, that this, nothing's going to happen, and lo and behold, look what happened. They're the people who've been selling us this crazy, crazy, crazy illusion of, on, 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 on the need for a Palestinian state. And look, right. look what the Palestinians want. They're the ones that are seeing blood rivers flowing. And they are not confused. They still are heading towards that wall. So, look, the Israelis are not stupid. Uh, they, they can see that. They can see through that. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that Netanyahu will survive this because, look, October 7th is epic. And maybe probably most of the government uh, and, 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 and the military leadership will be gone after the war. But he will not be removed before. He will not be toppled. He will not be uh, kicked out. It will be 
uh, democratic elections that will be held, whether it's next year or the year after. And I'm not even sure if he's going to run, but if he, you know, but, but, you know, in Israel, it, you cannot call yourself a Democrat and act in such a non-democratic way of trying to come against a legally democratically elected government. Elected. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You know, there's talk about the U.S. putting pressure on uh, Israel regarding an Egyptian Gaza uh, fence, an intensified uh, border fence that would cut off any smuggling of weapons uh, into Rafah and elsewhere. And uh, why why is this just you know another ridiculous proposal? And why why uh, does Rafah need to uh, experience what the other cities have in order to eliminate Hamas? Well, look, uh, there is no other solution. You cannot bomb from the air. You cannot make deals with anyone. We already understand. As long as even there is a single Hamas terrorist there, they will multiply. The ideology may not die, but we need to kill the terrorists. I mean, we cannot leave them to stay there and to start all over again. And make no mistake, the Israeli military not only is going to stay in Gaza, but is going to stay there for at least two, two more years. Uh, and and, and if, the, if we think that we need to stay there, then why would we allow four battalions of Hamas terrorists still be intact? It makes no sense. Look, for the sake of the people of Gaza, we need to eliminate Hamas. The two targets of this war is to eliminate Hamas and free our hostages. If, if we're not doing both, the war will not end. For the sake of the Gaza, I don't understand why nobody's talking about the fact there's 134 hostages still held by Hamas. What is wrong with you? Why are you saying ceasefire now, ceasefire now, without mentioning one single time to free the hostages immediately? Not tomorrow, not now. Free the hostages. Lay down your weapon. The war will end. Now, the war will end now. You lay down your weapon and you free the hostages. I promise you the war will stop instantly. No one is demanding that from the Palestinians. It's like, come on. Why did this war start to begin with? I mean, there was a ceasefire until October 6th, wasn't there? That's right. They, they decided that they don't want a ceasefire. They decided that they want to see us dead, killed, chopped to pieces, burned alive. That's what they want us, and they tried. And, uh, you know, 1,200 innocent people die, of civilians died, and, uh, you know, other hundreds of soldiers died and that, that day, and, and uh, we will not forget that. We will not for Look, even if the world is denying what happened, we know what happened. We have the footage of it. We have the confession of those who did it. We have, we have it. Now you can believe you can believe me or you cannot, but it's not going to change the fact that it happened and that they are going to pay for it. And that's it. Look, I can't believe that the US is now pushing for two-state solution is after October 7th. Right. It's what it sends is, and by the way, uh, sec, uh Mike Pompeo uh uh today. Uh, basically uh, tweeted the, the following thing, in which I agree with him fullheartedly. He said, establishing a Palestinian state in response to the October 7th massacre would be a clear reward for terrorism. That's right. All over the world, any resistance movement will know that if you want to get your independence, go and rape and behead and burn alive and kill, and you'll get it. That's it. It's not going to be, it's not going to happen. If there was some sympathy to, or some tendency towards maybe entertaining in our minds a Palestinian say it's gone. The Israelis are not there anymore. The Israelis understand the only thing the Palestinians want is not to live next to me, but live instead of me. It's not for nothing that they chant from the river to the sea. What is it between the river and the sea? The state of Israel. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. They don't look at the West Bank or Gaza. They look at Israel. That's what they want. And they're teaching their children that. And they're teaching, uh, they, they are breastfeeding them with, with such poison. So when, you know, if you want a, a, a clear page, if you want to start all over again, you need to wait. 
You need a new generation. You need only the babies that are born now. Maybe one day will be people who would love to live in peace with us. Everybody now, from the age of four and on, is already poisoned. Indoctrinated. Yep. Yeah. You know, Amir, it's just, I think, one of the most heinous things that uh, since this October 7th uh, terrorist attack happened uh, is to see some of these woke liberals uh, chanting things like rape is resistance. Mm -hmm. And and just, you know, the, the mindset today is beyond bizarre. And, you know, it reminds me of what Paul was talking about you know, the time coming of strong delusion and what a, what a delusional thing to say. And delusion is driving much of what we're hearing and seeing uh, today regarding some of these pressures that are being put on you uh, as a nation. It just, it, uh, it's like you were just saying, it doesn't make sense. You know, the Palestinians don't want a two-state solution. They want a one-state solution, and that is the state of Palestine and no Israel. And yet all of this is ignored, you know, just uh, because... Satan hates Israel and wants to see uh, the destruction of the Jewish people. So, you know, again, we're living in times that, uh, as you said, I, I and I agree, I, I am so thankful to be alive right now. Uh, we have more reason for confidence in the word of God than any generation before us since the time that Jesus himself walked the earth as the word of God. I mean, we're watching prophecies and precursors to fulfillment of prophecy happening all around Mm -hmm. us. And yet, as you mentioned at the start of the program, and I wanted to talk to you about this because we chatted a little bit, texting back and forth a couple of days ago uh, about sensationalism in the last days. And, you know, we're watching so many things happen uh, that are valid, that are biblical, or at least pointing to biblical fulfillments uh, down the road during the 70th week of Daniel. And yet people are going over the moon about the moon and, uh, you know, uh, solar eclipse and all these other things. And here we are. We've got this whole thing, uh, the blood moon phenomenon presenting itself again uh, in these last days. And where you've got a, a total solar eclipse that's going to pass through a portion of the Midwest of the United States. And there's all types of chatter out there about this being a prophetic sign. <laughs> Well, you know, I know personally people who left faith after the tetrad of the blood moons when nothing happened and, and they were told that it's significant, it's huge. And to, to some degree, there was a, a hint that the, that the rapture might even take place because the tribulation is is about to start. And, and people were disappointed to the point that they just walked away from faith. Yeah. And I've seen that more than once. And just as I came against the blood moons as a sign for a rapture now uh, or the tribulation beginning now, uh, uh, and later on in the September 2017 uh, Revelation 12 sign in the, in the sky, I came against that as well. Look, I'm not against the word of God being fulfilled. And that's what people need to understand. I'm against the wrong teaching of it and the misleading uh, uh, that is coming with it and the deception. And I'm just, I'm telling people, look, when if you take things out of context, you will always be disappointed because it will never happen. (laughs) It it will not be the way you want it to be. Yes. I also want to be raptured now. In fact, I wish the rapture will take place in a second. And by the way, it can. (laughs) <laughs> By the way, it can. Um, you see, the thing is, I don't need to wait for a solar eclipse for the rapture to take place. I don't think we need to wait for that. I think God is fully capable uh, to take us now, and biblically, it will fit perfectly to what what, the, what we know from. If Paul's thought that it can happen in his lifetime, how much more we can and allow to think that it can happen at any given moment right now. And to put a notion that a solar eclipse, and by the way, those eclipses happen all the time, every few years. And to, to say that this is it, A, it's not true, and B, it makes us look horrible in the eyes of the world because every yeah. time we come up with stuff like that and nothing happens, everybody's laughing at us. And three, it causes many believers to be confused, angry, disappointed, and to some degree, sometimes people walk away from faith. And I 
I said that then, and I say that it again now. What Jesus talked about in Luke 21, what Daniel, what Joel, what Revelation talked about, it's these are things that will take place during the tribulation. There's no, I, I'm not against, I know there will be signs in the heavens. I know things will, right. I know that the sun will darken. I know that the moon will look like blood and all that. All of these things will take place. I'm mm -hmm. not against it. I don't deny it. I just know that scripturally they will be part of the tribulation. And if I am a pre-tribulation rapture believer, I am not going to be here to see those things. Right. So, so, you're basically forcing me to say that if I'm not to be here during the tribulation and these events are events of the tribulation, then on April 8th, the tribulation must already happen, which means that I must be raptured before April 8th, which is date setting which, that is wrong to begin right. with. And so what happens is by, uh, by April 9th, People will see that they're still here, A, and that the tribulation hasn't begun because the Antichrist is not even here yeah. yet to, to, to rule. Maybe he was born. Maybe he's around us, but he's not yet revealed. So all of these things, it makes me sad more than anything else. It makes me sad because here we are. We Both of us, by the way, Barry, we dedicate our life to teach people on Bible prophecy so they will not fall into this. That's so right. they will not be confused. They will not be deceived. They will not be, uh, you know, but we want to encourage them, not to discourage them, not to bring them down, but to, you know, and sometimes we're the bearers of bad news. Sometimes we're the ones that say, you know what? That's not true. It's not true. Yeah, Amir, what you said is so important because not only does it um, – discourage people it discredits the message exactly. and you know when you're talking about you know well this is going to happen in the future that's going to happen in the future and you start talking about things that clearly show themselves uh to be unrelated to what supposedly is prophetic then who's going to believe that some guy's going to rise up out of the revived roman empire and deceive the whole world and cause the world to take a mark and then you know i mean it just to say nothing of what it does to the gospel and we look like a bunch of kooks when we say kooky things. And, uh, you know, the whole of the message gets to discredited. And that's why I think, you know, it's just so important to, to stick to the facts. And, you know, I've said this before and I'll say it again. The Bible is sensational enough. It doesn't right. need us to add clickbait or anything else to it uh, to communicate something that's just uh, 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 divine in nature and supernatural. Mm -hmm. And uh, Amir, you know, we've got a couple opportunities coming up and, you know, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We had such a wonderful time uh, on the Alaska cruise. Actually, I, I was speaking somewhere last Friday night and the couple that sat next to me was on the Alaska cruise and mm -hmm. is booked for the Mediterranean cruise. And uh, we've got some great opportunities coming up uh, later in the year and uh, looking forward to that. And there's uh, not only are we going to be moving through, as we have in the past, uh, revealing Revelation and teaching the book of Revelation in its entirety in a short span of time, uh, but now on what's the date for the, what's the May date for uh, discovering Daniel? I think May 4th. May 4th. Uh, yeah, I just received yesterday from Harvest the copy of the actual book uh, and, and of the workbook that is coming with it. Um, and uh, I'm I'm so excited. It I mean it looks great, and of course, as you can see, it, it is very similar to the, uh, um, to the um, I guess revealing revelation. Revealing yeah. revelation, yeah. It's the so yeah. so we're I'm I'm very excited about that, and and more so to teach it with you, on both the uh, Mediterranean cruise in October and next January, in the um, cruise to the Caribbeans, and in 2025. Look, I promise not to travel in 24, and not but in 25, uh, I'm I'm excited to travel again with you in <laughs> Asia, South America, Europe, North yeah. America. So uh, get ready. Yeah, you know it's it's been, uh, and I told you this. You know, I'm, I'm still doing a little bit of travel and speaking at different places and. 
and it's just odd to uh, to go. And when I get off the plane, you're not on the other end. So I'm looking forward mm. to us uh, uh, getting back at it together. And, yeah. uh, you know, to to teach these massive books in just a single setting in the span of the length of a cruise is is just a, a wonderful opportunity. I'm looking forward to both of those uh, yeah. coming up. So, you know, if you haven't uh, pre-ordered uh, Discovering Daniel, you really need to do that because it, these things are so important in, in getting the word out there to the to the world and and causing those who are in the brick and mortar stores to consider putting a, a book on the shelf. Uh, the, it's the pre-orders that they look at. And once those numbers reach a certain level, then places that need to have this book, like Target and Walmart and uh, other uh, stores that have a, a significant book section, are going to put it on the shelf. So, you know, I'm grateful for the books that we've done together, or book we've done together, and and uh, my own book, uh, my recent release, Time of the Signs. You know, the people that are ordering these in advance, uh, just I think on Amir's behalf and mine, I could say thank you uh, for yes. that because it is just a tremendous help. So uh, where can they register for these upcoming cruises? On our website. Uh, if they go to beholdisrael.org, they'll find a, a place where they can register to there's tours and cruises and all of that. And over there, they can definitely uh, sign up for the October and the January one. Um, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a wonderful opportunity to teach both the book of Revelation and Daniel uh, on one single cruise. But um, I can't wait. I can't wait to do that. And uh, in between to see some nice locations. So it's it's, it's a it's, it's a win win. Let's put it this way. Yep, I agree. Well, like I said, Alaska was was fantastic. It was uh, yeah. just what was it? Nine hundred and twenty people. Yes, and yeah, this time, uh, you know, the Mediterranean will be less than that because uh, we 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 had uh, smaller. Um, it's a smaller venue. The, the 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 meeting place on the big ships is actually smaller, uh, so we we took less than that, probably about five hundred or five hundred and or six or maybe six hundred people, um, yeah. but um, it's okay. <laughs> we don't. Yeah, it is. You yeah. know, I was thinking back to uh, when we were on the Alaska cruise, the the whole ship was talking about what is going on with this big, long line of people. And, you know, one of the funny things was that the line of people waiting to get into the theater for the teaching sessions went through the casino. Exactly. And, you know, here's, here's all these on fire believers talking to people in the casino uh, about the Lord. And it was just a, a fabulous uh, opportunity, you know, a witnessing opportunity as well. So I'm looking forward to that. I don't think the, I don't think the casino uh, really appreciated us. No. <laughs> uh, but but the, at least the, the people there uh, heard uh, that, that multiple conversations and it was wonderful. Yeah, they did. Well, my friend, great to chat with you and, and uh, see your face and hear your voice. And, and uh, we're praying for Israel, we're praying for you, we're excited about Connect. And uh, looking forward to the things that are going to uh, take place later in the year. So thanks for uh, giving us a little bit of your time. I know you got a million things going on, but much appreciated. And uh, we are uh, praying for the peace of Jerusalem and uh, praying for the Prince of Peace to make himself known amongst Amen. the Jewish people. So uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you, Thank you very much. again Thank soon. You. Shalom. Shalom. Well, that's it for this week. And, uh, you know, be praying for uh, Amir and the nation of Israel as, uh, as uh, God has uh, obviously brought the people back for the purpose of fulfilling uh, the 70th week of Daniel and all those other things. And we are so privileged to be alive right now and, and watch these things happen. So I uh, hope you were encouraged this week. And, you know, I, I think we have a responsibility uh, to those who are out there around us who are chanting uh, foolish things. And, you know, I just watched interview after interview where someone, you know, is asked a question, what river, what sea? And uh, people, they don't know. They can't even answer the question of themselves. They have no clue what they're chanting, but they're just following the masses and doing, you know, what somebody they know has told them they need to do. So, Let's get out there and be truth bearers in these last days. 
And, you know, Jesus is coming soon. I, I don't, some say you should never say soon, uh, but, you know, we're deep into the generation that will not pass away. And um, I think with our understanding of eschatology and the things we're watching and even talking about uh, today, um, I don't know the day or the hour and wouldn't dare speculate, but it sure seems like each day is a better candidate than the day before for that moment and twinkling of an eye. So with that said, that's it for this week. And thank you for joining us on the lineup. And we'll see you here, there, or in the air. God bless.